Hello, so um, good morning, everybody. Um, good afternoon. We are starting our class now, and we are waiting for others in the next five minutes. We're going to get started. Okay, uh, good afternoon. My name is Michael, and I'll be the one, I'm the instructor today, and I'm going to tell us about the global financial market, volume two. So in this model, we are going to talk about a currency pair. We are going to talk about what the first currency instrument means, what the second currency instrument means. We are also going to talk about major and minor, and also we are going to talk about pips, spread, how to put our take profit, how to set our stop loss on our PC, and also how to calculate our take profit and our stop loss, okay? So these are what we are going to talk about in our lesson today. And, I, and last week, we talked about the mode one, where we talk about the history of the market, we talk about types of currency pairs, we talk about major currency, we talk about exotic currency, and we talk about the cross currency. We talk about how US dollar became the fixed exchange rate for the old, um, and how US dollar replaced the gold standard system. We also talk about a whole lot of things about the major currencies. We talk about the names, we talk about the nicknames and all. And we, um, we, we talk about the eight major currencies, which are United States dollars, Great British pounds, um, Switzerland franc, New Zealand dollars, Australian dollars, Canadian dollars. We talk about Euro, and we also talk about Japanese yen. And we also talk about 
major currency pairs, which are pairing any of the eight major currency with US dollar. So if you're pairing GDP USD, you're also pairing a major currency. If you are pairing um, US, USD CHF, it is a major currency. I also talk about cross currency, whereby it means you are pairing different currency pairs aside from United States dollar. So when you are pairing GDP AUD, GDP CAD, you are talking about the cross currency pair. So today we are going to talk about we are going to talk about another type, which is um, the base and the quote currency. So in this aspect, we are going to talk about pairing and um, you know, when we talk about GBP, USD, USD card and all that. So all these currency pay as a meaning and they also as effects in our trading. So today we are going to talk about that and I want you to be very attentive. And um, I hope, and I know that at the end of this class, you will gain more knowledge when it comes to trading in the global financial market. So today we have a base and the quote currencies in trading. Now, we said a currency pair is a combination of two different currencies that are quoted against each other. So when we are talking about these first currencies, we are talking that these are a currency pair, when we talk about pair, you know, pair means two things. So pair is a combination of two different currency, currencies that are quoted against each other. So it means that if you want to trade, you have to trade with two things, two currencies. You are trading currency, you trade two currencies, Strategic commodity, you trade the commodity against the value of the commodity, which is commodity against currency. So we are talking about currency pair. So we are talking about two different currency pairs. So the first listed currency of a currency pair is called the base currency. It's called the base currency. So as you can see on my screen, that this Euro USD is an example. And now uh, this we said the first currency is called the base currency while the second currency is called the quote or the counter currency. So what does it mean? It means that Euro USD, this is the base currency and this is the quote currency. So we have Euro USD as the base and um, Euro, sorry, Euro as the base while USD as the quote. So if example of a, 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 a paraventure, you have a chart on your screen that is AUD USD. So what does it mean? It means that AUD is the base and um, USD is the, is the quote. So what I'm going to do is I am going to share this whiteboard so that we all we all be able to understand what it means. So when we are talking about currency pairs, if we have AUD slash USD, we, which means that, which means that AUD is the what? AUD is the base, that is, which means, which means AUD is the what is the base, while USD, USD is the quote, is the quote or counter counter currency okay so this is what it means so when you have on your chart when you have AUD USD it means AUD is the base and USD is the quote if you have USD CHF for example you have a um, USD CHF USD slash CHF which means USD is the what is the base and CHF is the quote. Okay, so that is what it means. So what it means is basically every first instrument, every first instrument is the base while the second is the quote. So that is what we are saying that the first instrument is the base while the second is the quote. So when we have um, USD JPY, USD is the base, JPY is the quote. If you have GBP, GBP CAD, GBP is the base, while CAD is the, is the quote. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Now, let's talk about quotations in trading. As we all know, that the markets are always quoted in pairs. So the price of a pair is how much the quote currency it costs to buy one unit of the base instrument. Yes. So what are you saying? We, we know that 
uh, in our trading, the, it is quoted or the chart is price against the time. So the price, at least you are seeing on your screen, is the price of the base, is the price of the quotes that the amount worth in base. So what does it mean? It means that if you are trading Euro USD and the price at which you are seeing, this means that one Euro is equivalent to US dollars, to the amount in US dollars. So one, what it means is that the first instrument that is what the price at which you are seeing in the screen is the value of the second instrument, is the value of the first instrument in the second instrument. So what I mean is that if you are trading Euro USD and you see 1.1524, so which means that for one Euro, you need 1.1524 US dollars. So we are still going to talk about that in the next slide. So I want you to have better understanding about it. Now, when you trade, you're always buying one currency while selling the other currency. So when you trade, you are always buying one currency while selling the other currency, yes. So it means that, you know, in trading, I tell you it's buying and selling. So if you're trading in pairs, it means if you are buying a currency, you are taking the other currency in exchange of the false currency. Now, so the quotation of a currency pair usually consists of two prices, which is the bid and the ask price, yes. Every of the quotation you are seeing in the chart has two prices, which is the bid and the ask price. Now, the bid is the trader's selling price, while the ask is the trader's buying price. So when I'm talking about it, I'm thinking that the bid is the trader's selling price, while the ask is the trader's buying price. So what does it mean? It means that if you want to sell a particular currency, the price at which your trade will be executed is at the bid price, because that is your selling price. And if you want to buy a particular currency, the price at which your trade is going to be executed is the ask is, is the ask price. So the bid price are the ask price. So usually, if you have your laptop or your PC, you see the bid price here at the first price, and the ask price is the second price under the quotation. Sometimes on mobile phone, once you go to the quote of your chart, the first price you see you see two prices. The first price is the bid price, while the second is the ask price. So if you are talking about the bid price, you are talking about price being the first instrument, being the first, um, um, the, the, the bid being the, being the price at which your trade is going to be executed if you want to sell, and the ask being the price at which your trade is going to be executed if you want to, if you want to buy. Now, bid is usually lower than the ask price. Yes, bid is usually lower than the ask price when it comes to trading, okay? so. We go to the next slide. Now, look at the slide we have here. Once you go to your chart, you go to your MT4. Once you go to your MT4, you go to your market watch. I believe you should know how to do that. And if you don't, we'll wait for the next um, classes where we're going to talk about meta four introduction to meta figure four. So now the first price that you see on your PC is the bid price. So what, what is the bid price earlier? You said the bid price is the trader's selling price. So if you click on the sell trade, this is the price at which your trade is going to be triggered. This is this price, is the price at which your trade is going to go up, is going to be triggered. And if you want to buy any currency, the ask price is the price at which your trade is going to be triggered for a buy. Okay, so this price, this bid price is your selling price, and this ask price is your what is your buying price. And so it is for every other currency pair or commodity or whatever you are trading. Now, from the image below, you can see that Euro GBP has a bid price of what? 0 0.85946. So we said that Euro GBP has a bid price of 0 0.85946 and has price of 0 0.85964. So it means that if you want to buy, I mean, if you want to sell Euro, the price at which your trade is going to be triggered if you are clicking on the sell is the bid price. And if you want to buy Euro GBP, which means that the price at which your trade is going to be triggered is the ask price. So don't get it, um, don't, 
get it mixed up. So now this trade, we have Euro USD, which equals to 1.14000. So the base currency, so that means that the value of one unit of the base in total is equal to 1.1 1 .1 Euro um, equals 1.400 US dollars. So what does it mean? It means that if we are pairing Euro USD or you are pairing any other currency against each other, the price of the base, remember I said the base is the first instrument while the put is the second instrument. So the price at which you would buy or sell the base is, the, is what you're saying in quote. So what does it mean? Now let's look at this chart. Look at this uh, MT4 chart we have. So this is the price. So everything, whatever you're seeing here is called the price. And whatever you're seeing here is called the time. So this is the price against the time. Now, when we say that euro, when we say that euro is what is one euro US is 1.1400. So it means that to buy euro, let's say for example, you want to buy euro, it means that to buy euro USD, to buy euro, it means the price at that particular point is one dollar and forty cents. So this price is the price in is the price of one euro one unit of fuel in US dollars. So that is what it means. So it means that if you are buying or whatever, if you are buying or buying or selling a base or selling an instrument, the price at which is going to be sold to you is the price of that unit of the base in quote. So if it is GBPCAD or GBPS like this, GBPCAD, this price is the price of one British pound in Canadian dollars. So we have one Canadian dollars and 71 cents. So we are still going to talk about all these 71339 and all that. We're still going to talk about that in the next, in the next slide. Okay. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can type it on the chat button. The chat box is open. So I'm going to answer your questions and we are going to continue so we can know if you are getting it. So if you have any questions, then you type it in the chat box to know that um, you can hear me or you can see me or you have any questions or you have anything that needs explanations, then we are going to give you that. Okay, so let's continue. Now we're talking about the spread. Spread is the difference between the bid and the ask price. Yes, we talked about that earlier by saying that the spread is the difference between the bid and the ask price. Don't forget that in the previous slide, we spoke about um, the, the ask price being greater than the bid price. That is the bid price being lower than the ask price, yes. So now because of the spread, because we are a brokerage firm and if you want to buy, you buy through us and if you want to sell, you sell through Pacific Union. And what we do is we only make money from the spread. That is the amount, the difference which you buy and the sell. So we make little money from it. And the beauty part of it is that of all the brokerage firms in Nigeria that I know, Pacific Union has the least spread when it comes to currency or commodity or whatever you're trading. Yes, we have the least spread. And don't forget, uh, if you trade, spread is the first thing that is going to be removed from your trading account balance. So with our Pacific Union, you can, your trade can easily become profit, can easily turn to profit because they have a very, very low spread. So we are going to talk about spread and how to calculate spread. Okay, so from this chart, we have got Euro USD, for example, we have Euro USD to be what? To be 1.13398. And the spread will be what 0 0.6, which is 1.13004. Now, what does it mean? How do we get the spread? We only subtract the spread, that will be bid price from the what from the I mean, yes, we subtracted the bid price from the ask price. So which means that the bid price is higher than the ask price. And for which to get the spread, we said that the bid, the ask price minus what minus the bid price. So that's what we did. We subtracted the bid from the ask price. So that is the that is um, the first thing you need to know about the spread. So there is no magic about it. The only thing there is we subtracted the bid from the ask price. So the base price is one point one three three nine, 
0.8 as a point, and the ask price is 1.13404. So what we did is for we to get the spread, we said that 1.13398 minus 1.13304. So what we are saying is when you remove the bid price from the ask price, you have 0 0.06 pips. So this means that for every of your trade, if the spread is not, if the spread is more, if, you are, if, your broker, if, if the broker firm has a higher spread, then for your trade to be in profit, it will take a longer time. So immediately you execute, the spread is going to be removed, but for it to be in profit, it will be a long, to take a longer period. Now let's talk about this, um, this price here, and we need to talk about the price in full so we can understand what it means. But prior to that, I said earlier, the Pacific Union has the lowest spread, which is a very good, uh, which is a very good sign and a very good signal for every trader. So if you want to trade profitably, profitably in the global financial market, you need to trade the Pacific Union. And Pacific Union is the brokerage firm for you. So let's talk about how to identify the price. Now, when we're talking about 1.14034, this means that, remember, I said that the price of the base is the value we're seeing in code, which means that euro USD, which means one euro is worth $1.14, and this 0 three is the pips, and the last one is for the point, that is the tenth of a point. So. Now let's talk about it one after the other, because with this, we, we, we will be able to understand what it means to take a trade or what it means to, what the price means in trading. So when we talk about that, now we have Euro USD to be what $1 and 14 cents. So we have how many digits behind this decimal? We have one, two, three, four, five. Now let's talk about it one after the other. Now I'm going to go back to the white screen to talk about it for us so we can have better understanding when it comes to trading. So let's talk about the what let's talk about the price in food. Okay, so we have here. We have euro USD to be what? 1.40, sorry, 1.4, okay, 1.14034. Now, what does it mean? It means one, now let's go to the next, one euro is equals one dollars one dollar and 14 cents so now remember we i'm going to take this one after the other let me select this text so we, we have better understanding about it okay so taking this then this. Now, when you see this value, this price, it means that one euro, this is euro, one euro equals what? One dollar and 14 cents. So that 14 cents, this is it because you know the value of cover, the value of coin or a coin value is always in 100. So it is two digits before the decimal. So we count that as the cent. So we count that as the same. Now let's talk about the last three digits. Now, remember, remember, remember we talk about global trading and global financial market being a transparent market. And because we know that there are a lot of numbers between one and two, we have 1.1, 1.11 and all that. So what they did is these three, these two numbers or two digits behind this coin value is called a peak. They are called what? They are called the pips. This coin value, they are called the pips. So they are called the pips. So when you see these three digits, 
this two digit is called the pips, while the last digit is the point of the pips. That is the tenth of the pip, which is called a point. So this is called a what? A point. It is called a point. So if you see any price, whatever price you see on your screen, except JPY case, it is a currency pair. The first two digits after the decimal is the coin value, while the third and the fourth is the pips. The fifth makes it, it a point. So if you want to say this now, we will say that if you want to call this price, we will call this price as what? One dollar. One dollar. Fourteen cents. Three pips. Okay, and three pips. Four points. So, but what we do here, because in Pacific Union, we have three digits calling them together. So what we do, you know, this is three pips. So we have three pips. But if you want to count this fourth digit together, remember I said that this fourth, this last digit is the tenth value of this. So if you want to call it four point, if you want to call it together, you can say, one dollar 14 cents and what zero three four points so which means that one dollar 14 cents and 34 points so it means one dollar 14 cents and 34 points so it means that the value of one euro at that particular time is what one dollar so we have one EUR equals what? One dollar, 14 cents and 34 points. So if you are taking these three digits together, one, two, three digits together, it becomes points. But if you, are, if you want to calculate it in pips without this last digit, remember I said this point is the 10th value of this pip. So what we do, what you do, you divide this 34 by 10, which is 3.4 pips. So if you want to call this pips, it all you can invariably say one euro euro equals one dollars one dollars fourteen cents and three point four pips. So do you understand this now? So you, you I hope you understand this. We have one euro equals one dollar fourteen cents and three point four pips. So if you want to, you know, compare or pair a price of a currency, that is how you need to read it. So you know that the first number after the decimal is uh, is the, the first digit before the decimal is the is the paper is the fiat value, while the first two is the coin value, while the third, fourth, and fifth is called the points or the pips. So we are going to talk about the pips in the next slide, but I hope you all understand this well, very, very well. So let's go back to our slide for us to continue the slide. So I hope you understand that the value of one euro, the value of one euro is what this is, it is 1.14034 in US dollars. So whatever thing you're trading in currency, whatever you're trading, you're trading in commodities, the value of the first instrument, the value of the base is the amount you're seeing in quotes, or is that the amount in price in what in quote? So let's go to the next slide. Now on this slide, we talk about what is a PIP. We talk about what is a PIP. Now, you know, remember we talked about what PIP was during the first slide, that um, during the previous slide and on the white screen, that what PIP is and what you understand by a PIP. So now today we are talking about what is a PIP. Now, the word PIP means price interest point. That is what it means. It means price interest point. So PIP is the is price increment or decrement from one point to another. So if price is moving from one point to another, it is called a PIP. If price is moving from one point to another, it is called a PIP. So it could be increment or it could be a decrement. So if price is moving, 
In fact, it's moving from one point to another. It's called a peak. Okay, now a peak is normally valued in increments or decrements of 0 0.00010. So, what does it mean? Now, let's go back to the whiteboard. Let's go back to the whiteboard where we have the value of the PIP. Now, remember, I said that in every price except for the JPY pairs, which is Japanese JS pair. Now, in every price, we have 1.14034. Point. So let's say this is the price, and now this is another explanation. So we have 1.140303 as the pip. So what we are saying is that if we have euro USD to be 1.1403, then the the last digit, this three, is the where is where the pip starts counting from. But if you add this four to read, making it 34, it becomes a point. But we are not talking about a point, we are talking about the pips. So where did the pips start from? The pip is the fourth digit after the decimal. It's the fourth digit after the decimal. So it starts from there. So if you have any increments from one, so let's say, uh, let me wipe this off. So let's, let's say that if we have, Hero USD to be 1.1403, eight as a point. So it means, and we have one pip increment, then one pip increment, increment of Euro USD will equal what? 1.1. For zero four, okay, one point one four. Okay, sorry. We have one point one four zero four eight. So now we have one point one four zero four eight. So which means that one pip increment would be what one point one four zero four. Now, how about 10 pip increment? So we have, if you have 10, 10 pip increment of euro USD, then it should be what? Price will become what? 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 
I hope you understand now. So the 10 bits is affected here. Uh, 10 bits is 1.14138. Then 100 bits increment of USD is 1.15038. So that is how price reads. And that is the movement of price from one point, from one point or from one price to another. Now let's talk about the next slide, which is in summary. We have in summary that 10 points equals one pip. Remember, we talked about uh, the pip value of point. Remember, we talked about the, the pip value of point to be what? 10 point to be what one pip. So we have 10 point to be one pip. We also have um, 100 point to be what 10 pips and 1000 point to be 100 pips. So don't forget what it means is that if you are to call this trade like this, so let's go to the whiteboard. So if you are to say this like this, we have if the price. So if you are calling this, if you have zero USD, zero, you have zero USD to be what? 1.14038. So what it means that one point, 10 points, if you have 10 points equals what? One pitch. So if it's, if it's still the same, so when we have 10 points, remember I said this is point. So if the eight is the point, so the eight, eight is the point. Okay, so eight is the point. So when we have 10 points equals one pip. So if you have, if you want to call it together, remember I said 10 points equals one pip. So if you have 20, 20 points or 10 points from eight, you to become what one pip. So we have 1.1403 as the pip. Remember, and if you want to call both of them together, we have 1.14038 point. So if you are taking this together alongside the pip, it is called the point. So if you have 10 points from eight, that is 10 plus eight, it is 18. So we have what? For, we have 1.1. Zero four eight. So what it means is that the ten points is if you add ten to that, so it will have it will become one point one zero four eight. So what we are saying is the ten points is one pip, one pip. Then we have hundred points to be what hundred points to be what to be ten pips. Then we have one thousand points to be. 100 pips. So I hope with this little, uh, with this explanation, we can be able to differentiate the price when we see it on our chart. Okay, so now we talk about how to trade. In this particular session, we are going to talk about how to trade, how to calculate our stop loss, how to calculate our take profit, how to calculate our entry, how to calculate and how to place our trade. So with this, we have to go to the chart. And once you go to our chart, we will, I will teach you how to place your entry. But, but then we need to know that before going to our chart. So there are three things are very important when it comes to trading. Three things are extremely important when it comes to trading. We have the entry, the take profit, and the stop loss. So these are the three important things a trader needs to know when trading. There are the important things a trader needs to know when trading. Okay, so let's talk about that one after the other. A stop loss. Stop loss means you telling your brokerage firm to help you. So a stop loss is you telling your broker to know how much you are willing to risk for a particular trade. So stop loss means you're telling your brokerage firm how much you are willing to risk 
for a particular trade. So if you have uh, a stop loss, if you have $100 for this trade, and you should know that for this $100, I am, if my trade is going against me with $10, then the trade, the brokerage firm should close my trade. For me, instead of me to lose the amount of money in my account, I, you know, I need to then, I need to take this out so that enable to, for me to have more accounts to trade and for me to bounce back and make more profit. Now, second is the take profit. A take profit is you telling your broker how much you are willing to make as a profit with one trade and close it when you're happy with the amount. So, for example, if you're buying zero USD, you should you should know the you should know that okay, in this particular trade of zero USD, I should if once my account balance or once my profit is about twenty dollars, is about thirty dollars, please close my trade for me. So when you're doing that, shows that you are telling the brokerage firm that once the profit is $20, kindly close my trade for me in profit. So if you have a $100 account and you set your take profit to be $20, because you are going to talk about how to calculate your take profit, your stop loss, your pips, and also I'm going to teach you how to do that in, uh, in also in calculating your risk, your pips, your take profits, and how to combine all of them together. So when we're talking about a take profit, a take profit is very important as well. Because your profit, if you are not, if you do not take it at the time, market changes at any time. It might move against you, and your profit can become lost. So thank God for today. Is some some of our traders took profit when trading today, and we are all happy with the profit we are making. So an a, a entry price is the price at which you execute your trade, either to buy or sell. You should know when to buy or when to sell, and you should know the reason why you are buying and the reason why you are selling in the global financial market. It is a marketplace. You don't just enter price aimlessly. You need to know why you are buying and why you are selling. Okay, so let's, let me explain this um, picture that you have. You know, the, like I said, in classes, the bigger theory of trading is for you to buy low and sell high. You buy when the price is low and sell when the price is low, when the price is high. So if you do not, take profit in time, when the price is increasing, you know, the price might go against it, like the man we have here, when he bought, he bought at a very lower price and the price is going, he was happy, but he fails to take his profit. And because he failed to take his profit, the profit starts reducing and, you know, it, it turns to, to losses. So this is an example, this is a pictorial example of how to place a trade. We have your entry, so if you are buying, you are anticipating that the price at which you are entering the market now is going to increase. So you buy at a very cheap price. And once the price has gone in your favor to some extent, you take your out your work, your profit. And remember, your stop loss, if you are buying, your stop loss should be below your entry. So every of your stop loss should always be below your entry. And if you are also selling, like what we have here, if you are also selling, you should know that your entry, you are anticipating that the price at which the market is at the moment, that market is going to go down, which means that the price is going to be cheap. So you sell, once you place your sell entry, your stop loss is going to be above your entry and your, your take profit to be below your work will be below your entry. So these are some of the things that you need to know. Before you trade, or except if you have been given a signal or you have been given an analysis to improve your trading. So if you are given a signal, you should know that if you are selling, it is being anticipated that the price will fall and the price is going to be cheaper than what it is at the moment. So you placing your stop loss, your stop loss should be above your entry, which means that if you are placing the stop loss, you are saying that if the price doesn't fall, and it's going against your entry, and probably it is increasing. You know, you want to sell a product and you're anticipating that the product you have is going to be cheap, and at the long run, it became expensive, you know, the price will be going against you and your trading will be in losses. So for you not to lose a huge capital of your amount, you need to learn how to put your stop losses. You need to learn how to put your stop losses. Now, another important thing that we need to learn is the loss size. So in trading, 
Lot size is a very integral part in trading. It is very essential and very important. What does lot size mean? Lot size means that the volume or the measurement of what you are going to buy or sell in the global financial market. So buying or selling in the global financial market, the lot size means the volume of what you're buying or selling in the global financial market. So lot size is what measures the percentage of your capital is used per trade, which in turn determine your profit or loss on that particular trade. So lot size is what measures the percentage of your capital you use per trade, which in turn means determines your profit or loss on a particular trade. So if you want to buy anything in the market, or probably you want to buy, everything is measured in quantity. So trading also, you also buy, a, a, your trading is also measured in quantity. So let's talk about types of lot size. We have three types of lot size in Pacific Union. One is the standard lot size, two is the mini lot size, and three is the micro lot size. So we have the standard lot size, we have the mini lot size, and we have the micro lot size. So let's talk about the standard lot size. So what is a standard lot size? The standard lot size has about 100,000 units of the base instrument. So what are we talking about? Remember we said that the base instrument is the first instrument in a particular trade. So the first instrument is the base instrument. So it has about 100,000 units of the base instrument, meaning that price moves in multiples of 100,000 units. Wow, this is huge. So if you're trading and you're using one standard lot size, just know that once a movement is moving, it is carrying 100,000 units of the base instrument. So remember I said in a base instrument, base instrument is the first instrument and the quote is the second, what? Second instrument. And ranges from 1.0 to 200 on our platform. Yes, on Pacific Union, you can buy as much as, you can use a high standard lot size as high as 200 standard lot size. Yes, and one lot size is equivalent to what? To 10 US dollars, yes. So what, which means that if you are trading with one standard lot size on a trade, one standard lot size, once price is moving, one is moving front or is moving one pip, it means one pip is $10, two pip is $20, three pips is $30, four pips is $40, five pips is what is $50. So if you are trading with one standard lot size, you will see them and you, you know that if you are trading and the stop loss is about 10 pips, it means that 10 times 10, it means you are risking $100 on a particular trade. So let's talk about mini lot size. A mini lot size has 1,000 units of the base instrument. So when we are talking about a mini lot size, it means it has to work 1,000 units of the base instrument. So remember, I said that standard lot size has what? 100,000 units. Mini lot size is what? 10,000 units of the base instrument, sorry. So many price moves in multiple of what? 10,000 units. So it means price moves in multiples of 10,000 units and ranges from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 on our platform. So what it means is that price moves from the ranges of lot size of 0 0.1 to 0 0.9, which means that 0 0.1 lot size is equivalent to what? $1. So it means that if you're trading with 0 0.1 lot size, it means if the price is moving one pip forward, it is moving $1. If it's two pip, it's $2, three pip, $3, four pip, $4, and so on and so forth. So that is how we have on the mini lot size. Then the last one we have here is the micro lot size, the micro lot size. The micro lot size has about 100, uh, sorry, about 1,000 units of the base instrument. So you can see the difference that from the standard lot size, you have 100,000 units. From the mini lot size, it's 10,000 units. Now the micro lot size is what? 1,000 units of the what? Of the base instrument. 1,000 units of the base instrument. Meaning price moves in multiples of what? 1,000 units. So and ranges from 0 0.01 to 0 0.09 on our class of yes. On Pacific Union, the micro lot size starts from 0 0.01 to what? 0 0.09. Now, 0 0.01 lot size is equivalent to what? 0 0.1 which means 10 cents. So if you are using 0 0.1 dollar, 
I mean, sorry, you know, if it's in 0.01 lot size, it means that for every PIP movement, you are, you are gaining 10 cents. So if, if, you are, if, if the profit is 10 pips and you are using 0 0.01, which means 10 pips for 0 0.01 is 10, 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents down to $1. So if you, are, if you are trading with 20 pips and you are using 0 0.01, it means you are going to make what? How much? Two US dollar. So in summary, let me summarize this for you. The micro lot size is the least and is the smallest, which is what? 0 0.01 on our platform. So it's, it's 0 0.01 and the, the peak value is what, 10 cents. So 0 0.01 and the peak value is what, 10 cents. While the micro lot size is 0 0.1 and the peak value is one pip equals one US dollars. While the standard lot size is 1.0 and one pip equals what, 10 lot size. Okay, so I hope you understand this lot size very well because it plays a very integral role in trading. So whatever you are trading in the global financial market, you need the lot sizes. So today we talk about the currency, the currency pair, what the base currency means, what the code currency is. We also talk about the pips, we talk about the spread and the bid and the ask price. We also talk about the pips and we talk about the lot size. So we have the standard lot size, we have the, the mini lot size, we have the micro lot size. So the standard lot size starts from what? 1.0 to 200. So if you are trading 1.0 to 200, you are trading a what? You are trading a standard lot size. And if you are trading a mini lot size, you start from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9. So 0 0.1 to about 0 0.99. So you're trading mini lot size, which means that for one pip is $1. So two pip, is two dollars three pips is what three dollars now it is in multiples don't forget so if you use 0 0.2 which means one pip is how much two dollars so two pip is four dollars so they are all in multiples now and we are talking about the micro lot size which is the least which is 0 0.01 to 0 0.09 so which means one three pip is what 10 cents so if you are it's two pips, it's or two cents. So if you use 0 0.02, we start from what 20 cents. If you use 0 0.03, we start from what 30 cents. So that is that about lot size. Now let's talk about how to calculate our profits in trading. So with this, I am going to take us to our screen and our chart. I'm going to explain a few things to our, for you on our chat, just a minute, I'm going to stop sharing, then I'm going to put on my chat so that we can have better understanding on how to pick a trade, what we need in picking a trade, and also how to calculate our stop loss, our take profit, and our entry. Okay, just a minute. So I'm, I'm putting up our chat at the moment. So, uh, okay. Okay, so our chat is on. And this is what you need to do when it comes to trading. So on a Pacific Union, we have all currency pairs, all commodities. We also have some major cryptocurrencies. You can trade Dogecoin, you can trade Bitcoin, you can trade Litecoin, Ethereum, you can trade Ripple and any other cryptocurrency on our platform. Okay, so I am going to 
Australian dollars. And let me quickly explain this to you. Like I said, the bid and the ask price. So this is your market watch. If you are using your laptop, you are still going to go to your um, introduction to MetaTrader 4, where we talk about how to use our laptop, how to use our, our laptop, how to use our phones to place trades. So now I just want to teach us how to take our trade. And you can see that we have a trade running uh, at the moment, and the trade is in profit of 1,238 US dollars. So we have um, Australian US dollars, we have 80 US dollars currently. And what we are going to do is, uh, let me explain this place to you. This is where we have all the currencies on the chart. We have all the currencies, all the commodities, the cryptocurrencies we have on our platform. And with this, this is the bid price. So like I said earlier, this is what this is the bid price. What is the bid price? The bid price is the trader selling price. And this is the ask price, which is the trader buying price. So if your trade wants to be triggered, this is the amount, I mean, this is the price at which if you want to sell. So let's say, for example, you want to sell AUD USD. And as you're selling AUD USD, the price at which your trade is going to be triggered is the bid price. And if you want to buy AUD USD, the price at which your trade is going to be triggered is the ask price. So these two prices are very important that you need to know. While this is the spread. So like I said, the spread is the difference between the ask price and the bid price. So if you, if you want to know the spread, which is what the amount of Pacific Kino is going to be done from our trade, so this is the amount Pacific Kino is going to be done from our trade, which is one pip. So which is 1.9 pip. This is not in pip, they are in points. Remember I said that the 10 value of a point is pip. So this is in points. So we have two pip. Um, this is 1.9 pip. So let's go to our trade. Now what is important is I'm going to show us how to pick our trade. So if you are having a laptop, so what you want to do, probably you have a signal or you have an analysis to, to know or to check. What you would do is for you to pick a trade, the first place you will go to is a new order. Once you click on the new order, that is the first place you will go to. So let me explain this place for us so that when we get to our home, you can watch these videos on our YouTube page. You can watch it anytime so you have better understanding. So for you to pick a trade, once you have a signal, you go to new order. You can see new order here. This is it on the new order. We click on new order. Once you click on new order, now you look at the symbol, what you're trading. What are you trading? Is it AUD USD? So currently you're trading AUD USD. This is it. So if, if AUD USD is not there, you can look for it. Just click on the tab here. It will bring out all the instruments there. So because you are trading AUD USD, you search for AUD what? AUD USD. Okay, so we have AUD USD on our screen. Now, remember I said about volume. So the lot size, lot size is the volume. So look at this, the volume is where you put your work, your lot size. And remember I said that the lot size determines your profit and your loss in a trading. So it determines your profit and loss in trading. So that is what we have. Now, once you do that, you click on the volume, Once you click on the volume, then you can change it. Like currently we have 0 0.15. This is an example of a mini lot size. Why is it a mini lot size? Because we do not have one here. We only have 0 0.15. So we have 0 0.15, which is called a mini lot size. So because it's mini lot size, what does it mean? It means that every pip means $1.50. So 1.15. Remember I said, Many loss ties are from 0 0.1. So if you have 0 0.1, then it means one pip is one dollar. But because it's, you are using 0 0.15, so it means one pip, which is one dollar fifty cent. So if you want to change it, you can click on this dot button. You have 0 0.01 here. You see it has changed to 0 0.01, or you double click it. Once you double click it, you can now change it to whatever lot size you want to change. You can change it to 1.00, 1.00. You can change it. You can change it. Oh, sorry, it is gone. So you can change it to 1.00. You can change the lot size to 0 0.15 or 14. You can change it to 0 0.15. You can change it to 0 
0.04 or 0.03. So this is where you change your lot size. This is the volume, and that is where you change your one, your lot size. Now we have the stop loss panel. This is a stop loss panel, and this is the take profit panel. Remember, we said earlier that if you want to trade, you have to take nowhere to take your profit and you know to know where to put your stop loss. So if you are buying, your stop loss should always be below your what your entry because you are anticipating that the price is going up. And stop loss means that if, if you trade in the wrong way, which means the price is probably going against your direction, you need to control, you need to tell the broker to take you out of the market. So this is where you put your stop loss. You can click on this, any of this arrow button to take you to the current market price. So all you need to do, you double click it and you change it to whatever stop loss you are given. So if you're giving 0.04362 or whatever you're giving, you change it to the um, required stop loss you're giving. And this is where you change your take profit value. Like I said, you click on any of these arrows. If you want to increase, you can keep increasing. And if you don't want to, all you need to do is double tap, double tap and change the value, okay? So you can change the value. Now, this is the order. This type is called market execution. So if it's a order, let's say they'll give you, will be given an order today and it said sell instant sell or sell at current market price or sell now, then you don't need to, to type here. All you need to do, once you punch in your lot size, you check your symbol, which is AUDUSD, you punch in your lot size and your, and your stop loss and take profit, then you can click on the order. If you want to buy, you click on buy instantly. If you want to sell, you click on sell. But if it's a pending order, so this is where you are going to change it. This is asking you what type of execution it is. So if it's a pending order, you see you have market execution, we have pending order. So you click on the pending order, then you see the type. So what type of pending order do we have? We have the buy limit or this the sell limit order. So we have the stop order or the limit order. Now in, in the limit order, it means that you are buying below the current market price. So we are still going to talk about that in the type of order in the next, uh, next class we are going to have. So this is where you change the order. If you tell you buy limit, buy stop, sell stop, buy, um, buy stop, sell stop, whatever order you are giving. So this is where you are going to change the order. And once you do that, you put the price here. At what price at which you want the order to occur, you put the price here, then you click on place the trade. So because we are, we want to calculate our profits and our losses and um, using our lot size, we are going to generate signal from here. This is just for education purpose. And I, I, we are just going to look at the market because of our time. We're going to look at the market simultaneously when we pick our trade. So currently we are having a pullback over this and let's say we, our anticipation is that price is going to fall with this what we are seeing so and i'm going to sell so if i want to sell with the current market price what i'm going to do is because price is coming down to this area i might look at it and look at with the down price down movement of this price there's high tendency that price goes down to this particular region to this region and let me take my profit. So what, what are we going to do? You look at if the price doesn't sell, where should my stop loss be? Because I am selling, I'm anticipating that the price will go down. My stop loss should be above here. Now let's, let me take um, two lines here. So this, let's say this is our stop loss and our take profit should be here. Okay, so where is our entry? Our entry is this price. Now, what are we going to do? How do we calculate the loss size that we're going to use? So we, we, let me, let's pick the other that if you are selling, all you need to do, because you know where you put your stop loss and where you put your take profit, you go, you come here. This is one of the fastest way without you stressing yourself. When you go to the new order, don't forget, I've known where my stop loss is and I've known where my take profit is. So I go to new order, I click on new order, now, what lot size would I use? So, how what lot size will I use? Okay, I'm trading AUD USD. I check it; it's correct. The currency I'm trading is AUD USD. Okay, so AUD USD is very very correct. Now, what lot size will I use? So, I'm going to use one with a standard lot size, 
one with uh, a, a mini lot size and one with a micro lot size. So let me use a standard lot size. Please, this analysis is for educational purpose, okay? So now I'm going to use one standard lot size, so which means that if the current market is selling truly, that I am going to buy, I'm going to make $1 from each P. So where is my stop loss? My stop loss, remember I said, because you're selling your stop loss, you always be above. So my stop loss is 0 0.7511. So double tap this place, double tap. We have, oh, sorry, 0 0.7451. What? So this is my stop loss, which means that the price is going against me then uh, you should take me out here. Then my take profit, where am I targeting? I am targeting this region. This is my take profit because I'm selling. So I'll click on 0 0.74186. So because I am taking the trade and it is sell, I'm going to click on sell. So once you click on sell, you have this order. So once you click on sell, all you need to do is you look at the, the, the your entry price for you to calculate your pips, your, your pips, you can click on this entry price and you know you drag it. So the third the third number you see, you know, we have 148, 159, 165. So the number in the middle is called the pips. So you can look at it in point. That is one. Now we, we are risking what 168 points. So, and you remember I said a point is 10 value of a pip. So 168 points means is what? 16.5 pips. So you are risking 16.5 pips to make what? The profit is we are making, we want to make how much? 16.2 pips. So now let's look at it. So all you need to do, okay, just a moment. So all you need to do is once you click on once you click on the order, so once you click on the order, it will tell you how much you are risking on, on the PC. So it's telling you that in this trade, I am risking 165 pips if the price is going against me. And if it's coming against me, how much, will I, how much am I making? I'm making $160. So I'm making $160, so I'm anticipating to make $160 if the price is moving against me. And as you can see that this price is moving, it is moving in my favor. So because of the price moving in my favor, I have made um, about 30 to $40. And this is where you are going to look at it. And this is where you are going to look at it. So this is just a, an example, an educational example for us to learn how to put our take profit and how to take our stop loss when using our laptop. So we are still going to talk more about that when it comes to um, using our phones. Okay, so with this, I really want to appreciate your time. And um, I want to, I hope, and I know that you gained a lot from this class. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us or you can type on our YouTube page or reach out to your account manager. We are going to help you and ask, answer all your questions. Thank you very much for your time and have a nice day.